from 13 ABC. Conklin and Company with 13 ABC Action News anchor Lee Conklin. First with what's happening behind the headlines. And take three, our panel of political analysts. Morning, everybody. Welcome into another edition of Conklin and Company. Today on the show, Mayor Bell using the veto hammer on the amendment to the domestic partner legislation offered up by city council. The high price to win the White House. Ask Mitt Romney who's trying it again. The mind-numbing numbers raised in May alone by the Obama re-election camp and the Romney campaigns. We'll address that. Uh, also, uh, more presidential politics and Scott Walker, still the governor of Wisconsin. That and more in Take 3. And in Take 2 today, we're going to salute our Take 3 guests and their newspaper's efforts to help the community. Michael Miller of the Toledo Free Press, Fletcher Word from the Sojourner's Truth, but first, they asked to bring back the boom, and the community really stepped up in a major way in Waterville. Here to talk about that and other issues facing small city mayors here in Northwest Ohio is Lori Brody. She's the new mayor of uh, the city of Waterville in western, southwestern Lucas County. Good to have you on the program. Yes, first thanks time. for having me, Lee. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about this effort to bring back uh, the boom. Uh, many communities struggling. We've done stories uh, the last couple of weeks about uh, some cities that have had to forego uh, fireworks, 4th of July, and that's coming up about, about a month from now, uh, is a little less than a month as our show airs here on Sunday. But uh, Waterville uh, made a concerted effort after, after going quiet for a couple of years that the community really wanted this. And how, how'd you get it done? This was great. It's a true community volunteer stepping up effort. As we all campaign, myself and the council people who were up for election, the number one concern that we heard uh, was about the fireworks. And I felt as someone running for office, I had already been on council, knew some of the issues, I felt that fireworks meant, boy, we have a great town mm -hmm. if what we're missing is just the fireworks celebration. Um, we had to cut the budget about 2008, 2009, and unfortunately everything such as fireworks and not necessary for the town's well-being, we had to give that up. So a group of people right after uh, elections and everybody was seated in January, a councilwoman named Barb Bruno mm -hmm. uh, was reelected. She decided with a couple other people that she would take on the effort and bring back the boom. It was amazing. We had uh, news people contact us, word got out very fast and people started to jump on board. If you don't mind, I wanted to recognize Barb Bruno and her daughter Jessica um, got together with a couple neighbors, Mary Duncan, Debbie Snyderhan, um, Chuck Larkins, and Veronica Roser was from a small town nearby. They, yeah, what's a small town? You can mention. Yeah, Haskins. Okay, sure. And you know sure. what's great is those six people did the bulk of the fundraising in mm. about six weeks. Amazing. So it goes to show you that it can be done. Um, their goal was 20000 we actually needed 15000 for the fireworks show, but we thought it was smart to go a little mm. higher. And then if we raise more, we could put it towards the next year's fireworks Which show. Which you did. Oh, my goodness. We raised a, a little in excess of $23,000 yeah. in the short amount of time. So I think people were astounded, amazed. Uh, we had individuals give large amounts of money, and we had several of our businesses give a very large check of $1,000. Wow. Well, and that's what I want to ask you about, because you had a number of fundraisers and uh, local restaurants uh, w would get in on it as well. If you, if you shopped on a certain day, some of the proceeds would go to, to bring back the boom, and maybe other communities looking to do the same thing. And they contacted you and said, how'd you get it done? Oh, precisely. Uh, the group that I mentioned, the small group of people, mm -hmm. came up with this idea, which was phenomenal. They started at one restaurant, worked their way through about a list of six, and um, what they did was they hosted a night. And on the night, these uh, servers would they would either collect tips, and the restaurant would give back 50%, mm -hmm. or we just did donations. People oftentimes just came up to rather just give us a donation. We had right. raffles. They enjoyed it. I think it brought business into Waterville. Um, we had people at one restaurant. I was personally there, and we walked around. I said, are you from Waterville? You can, Bulk of the people were not from not, Waterville. Which restaurant? You can mention. It's Chowders. Okay. It's Chowders. Chowders, Chowders and right, more. Right. I want to make sure I remember them all as a problem. <laughs> Dale's and all of them right. out there. Um, Zimful. But the first one was Chowders, who gave a great big donation, and they, they did an awesome job uh, bringing people in. It was crowded. And, and this event is really a community event that brings in people from outside uh, from outside the city of Waterville. It's still funny to call it a city at, yes. at this point, just new into this uh, this foray. And uh, full disclosure, uh, and I've said it before, I, I live in Waterville, yes. have for many years. Yes. Uh, but it's, it's a town, city, that faces many of the challenges that so many cities in our in our region face. You talked about budget cuts in 08 and 09. And fireworks, just one of the things that you had to say so long too. So how are you dealing with the other issues, the other challenges that uh, that, that come with uh, the constraints that you may be under? 
We are being cautiously optimistic. Um, 2011 brought an increase in revenues roughly 4%, but what we're hoping to do is we're keep carrying along our path of 2010, 2009 of how we budgeted, and we did have to cut, and we're slowly bringing back. We had to cut through employee benefits. And cut certain, staff too, Yes, didn't you? staff. We have yeah. not replaced some people. We have contracted out. We have done what every other town mm -hmm. is doing. It is tough. You just look for each and every area where you can save a bit here and there or maybe do it a little less expensively without compromising the town. As you know, living there, it's mm -hmm. a great place to be and people pay to live there. Um, we're a bit of a bedroom community and that's rough. So we're hoping with the expansion that we might see with our new bypass out there that we'll have a mixed use and we may have um, some corporate interests, some right. retail interests, as well as some more residential, but hopefully our tax base might be a bit diversified, which would help us mm. out. How do you deal with the balance though? Because people move out there, they want that small town feel along the river in the old downtown, uh, but you need the tax revenue of, of what business can bring in. Uh, so it's a push-pull. It's definitely, as I would say, that that would be the toughest balance in, in what I've talked about from 10 years ago when I started on council. We all came there for a reason, so you have to be careful because people want it like that. But at the same point, to pay for the great town that we have and the services we provide, we have to have a balance. So that's why when we just did our count comprehensive plan, we had not updated it since the year 2000. We had new census data. We just are um, reading it now through at council and um, planning to adopt it. So we're hoping that the future, the people after us too, will look through this and use some of the ideas to keep a fine balance. Um, and through zoning, you can do some of mm -hmm. that. You have to think about where you put things. Obviously, we have a new bypass right. opening, a big right. change for our little town. And we have to hope our zoning's good. We have to hope that it can hold and there'll be areas of certain types of commerce and other areas for residents. So that is a big part of what we've been trying to do. For the people who don't live in, in the village or in Waterville Township, uh, mm -hmm. but travel that that road every day on US 24, when's the construction going to be done? What, do, what are you yeah. hearing? Because, uh, <laughs> it, I mean, question. you understand that, that good comes from uh, the long-term uh, delays uh, that, that construction bring, but uh, uh, when are we seeing the end of the uh, the tunnel? The orange barrels <laughs> and the tunnel. Uh, the good news, they think it's a little early at the end of August that the bypass will actually mm. open, so once you see that, everything else should finish up mm. and it should take a lot of traffic do, off of the town streets. Do downtown businesses feel they're going to lose out by some of that traffic is going to be uh, to the west or to the north of the downtown area? I would area. say they're probably a little nervous. It's mm -hmm. been talked about for 10 years yeah. and uh, longer than that, but 10 years is real serious and I think they're nervous. Some have said they may move if they need to, depend on the type of business, but I think the businesses we're attracting now will probably make it. A lot of restaurants, a lot of more uh, places for all of us to go out and people from Toledo to come out and visit. Yeah. So I'm hoping the right mix is down there, but I encourage everybody to go down there and check out downtown Waterville. It is awesome. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yes. It's pretty good. Yes. I don't work for the chamber, but yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> we appreciate you coming on, Lori Brody. Hey, thank you very right. much. Uh, bring back the boom. It is July 4th, is July it July 4th, and yeah. may I mention we're having festivities to celebrate uh, 530 at the Waterville Primary to celebrate that we were able to do it. Yeah, it's a big, it's so. a big uh, lot. Uh, you yes. heard a lot of people Games, come on out. And, fun, uh, yeah, come food. on out and join us for that. Thank you. Lori Brody, Mayor of Waterville. We'll come back in just a minute. Take two on the way. A salute uh, to the gentleman who helped us on take three. I'll explain that in just a minute.